India's push to strengthen its armored capabilities in high-altitude zones took a major step on July 14, when five domestic firms, including Bharat Forge, Tata, Mahindra, Avianel, and Larson and Tubro, submitted proposals for a Rs 20,000 to 25,000 crore light tank contract. The move follows operational challenges during the 2020 Ladakh standoff, where heavy tanks proved less effective. LNT, in collaboration with DRDO, has developed the 25-ton Zorwar tank, featuring a 105mm gun, drone integration and AI systems. Named after Himalayan war hero, Zorwar Singh, the tank is tailored for rugged terrains like Ladakh and Arunachal Pradesh. LNT remains the sole full bidder, making it a frontrunner. An initial order of 59 tanks is expected soon under the Make in India push, aiming to bolster northern defenses and defense self-reliance. Armenia has expressed deep appreciation to India for the reliability and effectiveness of its defense equipment following battlefield success in Operation Sindor. Reports indicated that Indian supplied systems, including Panaka multi-barrel rocket launchers, artillery and loitering munitions, played a decisive role in neutralizing enemy positions during the operation. Armenia's leadership conveyed gratitude through diplomatic channels in July 2025, highlighting India's timely deliveries and robust support despite regional tensions. The defense cooperation between the two countries, which accelerated after 2022, has included multiple arms contracts worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Officials noted that these battlefield outcomes have strengthened Armenia's trust in Indian technology and could pave the way for deeper strategic engagement. The development also showcases India's growing credibility as a reliable global arms supplier under the Make in India initiative. The BrahMos supersonic cruise missile has achieved a success rate exceeding 95% in tests and operational firings, reinforcing its role as India's premier deep strike weapon. Reports indicated that the missile's versatility, capable of being launched from land, sea, air, and soon submarines, combined with its Mach 2.8 speed and precision guidance, makes it highly effective against advanced enemy air defense networks. The missile has been continuously upgraded with extended ranges beyond 450 kilometers and advanced seeker technologies to evade detection and interception. Defense officials highlighted that the system's reliability underpins India's deterrent posture against China and Pakistan. Jointly developed by India and Russia, BrahMos has also attracted international customers, bolstering India's defense exports. Future enhancements, including a hypersonic variant, are expected to further expand its strategic reach and operational dominance in high-threat environments. The Indian Army announced plans to host the Surya Dronathon in Himachal Pradesh's Spiti Valley next month, aiming to accelerate innovation in unmanned aerial systems. The event will bring together domestic drone startups, defense technology firms, and academic institutions to demonstrate solutions tailored for high altitude operations. Officials stated that the Dronathon will focus on surveillance, logistics, and combat applications in extreme terrains a critical requirement along India's northern borders. The initiative follows lessons from recent conflicts, where drones played decisive roles, and reflects the Army's broader push to integrate indigenous technologies under the Atmanirbhar Bharat framework. Top-performing systems could secure procurement opportunities and developmental partnerships with the armed forces. The Spiti Valley location was chosen to rigorously test participating drones in challenging weather, and altitude conditions, ensuring operational relevance. The Indian Coast Guard launched its sixth indigenously built fast patrol vessel, FPV, named Atal, at Goa Shipyard Limited in Goa. The launch marks a milestone in India's drive for self reliance under the Atmanirbhar Bharat Initiative. Designed by GSL with over 60% indigenous content, the 52-meter vessel, 
is equipped for anti-smuggling, easy patrol, anti-piracy, and rescue operations. It is also India's first FPV to use controllable pitch propellers for better maneuverability. Atal is the sixth in a series of eight FPVs commissioned to boost ICG's operational strength. The Coast Guard, which began in 1977 with seven vessels, now operates 151 ships and 76 aircraft. It plays a vital role in maritime security, search and rescue, and disaster response, and has seized contraband worth over rupees 52,500 crore and saved more than 11,700 lives to date. A UN report has highlighted that the Resistance Front, TRF, initially claimed responsibility twice for the April 22 Pahalgam terror attack, which killed 26 civilians, and even released a photo of the site, before retracting its claim on April 26. The UN Security Council noted conflicting views among member states. Some believed the attack was aided by Lushkari Tayyiba, citing TRF as its front, while others rejected Let's involvement. India later launched Operation Sindor targeting terror bases in Pakistan and Pak in retaliation. The UN's April 25 statement condemned the attack, but omitted TRF's name due to Pakistan's objections. Meanwhile, the report warned of ongoing regional instability, citing ISIL-K as a major threat with 2,000 active fighters, growing TTP attacks, and Al-Qaeda's continued ambitions in South Asia. Iveco Group NV is reportedly nearing a major split sale, with its defense division likely to go to Italy's Leonardo Spa and the commercial trucking unit to India's Tata Motors. The announcement could come as early as July 30, coinciding with Iveco's earnings report. The Italian government has been keen to keep the defense arm domestic, making Leonardo's 1.6 billion euros bid, submitted with partner Rainmetal, more favorable despite trailing rival offers. Tata Motors, already in advanced talks for the commercial segment, stands to gain Iveco's trucks, buses, powertrains and specialty vehicles, bolstering its European operations and tech capabilities. Iveco is owned by EXORNV, the Agnelli family's investment firm, which is aiming to diversify away from automobiles. While final decisions remain pending, the deals mark a major reshaping of Europe's vehicle and defense landscape. In a major advancement for India's private defense sector, Adani Defense and Aerospace has become the first private Indian company to successfully pass the Ministry of Defense's stringent desert trials for 155mm artillery shells. This clearance confirms that Adani's ammunition can perform reliably under harsh desert conditions, an essential requirement for deployment along India's Western Front and for international sales. The company's 500-acre facility in Kampur, established in early 2024 under the Uttar Pradesh Defense Corridor Initiative, has begun production of both small-caliber ammunition and 155mm artillery rounds. Adani currently produces about 150,000 artillery shells annually, with one-third of that capacity reserved for domestic defense use, while export orders have already filled the remaining quota for the next five years. Small arms production stands at 150 million rounds annually, with a goal to double it by the end of 2025. This achievement coincides with the Indian Army's broader artillery modernization push, which includes a transition to 155 mm, 52 caliber guns, under its field artillery rationalization plan. As desert trials for other systems continue into 2025, Adani now joins top domestic players like DRDO, Bharat Forge, and LNT in shaping India's self-reliant munitions ecosystem and strengthening its export footprint. As per some reports published in IDRW.org, AxisGade's engineering technologies has secured a crucial contract to support India's Virupaksh ASA radar program a major upgrade initiative for the Indian Air Force's Su-30 MKI fighter jets. 
This one highlights the growing involvement of Indian private firms in cutting-edge defense technology development and aligns with the nation's self-reliance goals under the Atmanirbhar Bharat Initiative. Under the contract, Axis Gades will be responsible for developing key radar subsystems, including the Exciter Unit, Receiver Unit, and the Antenna Beam Control Motherboard, essential elements for enhancing radar performance. These upgrades are designed to significantly improve the Su-30 MKI's detection, tracking, and targeting capabilities, ensuring the aircraft remains competitive in modern aerial combat scenarios. The company will collaborate closely with the DRDO and key defense public sector undertakings to deliver these critical components. According to AxisGate's chief technology officer, this project reflects the company's strengths in radar, sonar, and signal processing technologies. The Virupaksh ASA radar upgrade is a central element of India's broader plan to modernize its air fleet. With its inclusion in this high-value program, Axis Gates further cements its reputation as a trusted contributor to India's indigenous defense infrastructure. India's indigenous Tejas MK-1 fighter jet has surpassed its original design expectations by demonstrating a takeoff weight of 14.2 tons, well above its certified limit of 13.5 tons. This achievement, confirmed through recent flight trials, marks a critical milestone in the aircraft's operational evolution and showcases the collaborative efforts of Hindustan Aeronautics Limited and the Aeronautical Development Agency. Initially conceived as a lightweight multirole fighter, the Tejas MK-1 has steadily matured through incremental upgrades. The increased weight capacity was achieved using full internal fuel, external drop tanks, and varied weapon configurations, without compromising flight safety, engine performance, or aerodynamic stability. This allows the fighter to carry a wider combination of munitions, targeting pods, and electronic warfare systems, thus enhancing its versatility across mission profiles such as air-to-air -air combat, ground attack, and maritime strike. The trials also provide valuable validation for the upcoming Tejas MK-1A variant, currently in production, which will feature enhanced avionics, ASA radar, and a more robust airframe. Retaining the same GEF-404 and 20 engine, the MK-1A is expected to fully utilize the aircraft's structural potential. The increased payload capacity strengthens India's case for defense exports and reinforces its credibility in indigenous fighter development. That's all from YKS team for now. Hope you liked today's video. Please subscribe our channel for more such videos. Thanks for watching.